Hi guys, today's video is all about Japanese gardening tools. I'm going to talk you through the tools I'm using throughout the year and I will show you how to clean them and how to sharpen them. Let's get started right away with this tool here. These are my shears. These are great for anything that needs clipping or shaping into a rounded shape, but they can also be used for hedge trimming and other uh, clipping or uh, topiary style of work. It's important to use those only on uh, shrubs or bushes that have small leaves and also very thin branches, like for example, boxwoods. They could also be used on Japanese azaleas. So the way of using them is really very easy. Uh, when you start at the top, you start this way around with the tools, holding them like that. And as you wor work your way down to the sides, you flip them around and work down the sides like this, which makes it really, really easy and very practical to use. These, by the way, they come in different sizes. So the handles, they come in a different lengths and also the blades come in different lengths. I'm using the uh, smaller size of this series, uh, which works best for me. Next are those two tools. These are hand clippers. So basically uh, the same purpose as the shears, but it's a different way of working. Uh, those can of course also be used to cut rounded shapes, but that's easier with the shears. And with these clippers, I, for example, prune Japanese azaleas that have, do not have a rounded shape, but more like a, a flat kind of shape, or also any other kind of uh, shrubs that have small leaves and thin branches. That's also important for those. Now they are very similar. But the difference is that these, if I open the clasp, you can see that the blades are pretty much the same on either side. And on those, if I open those, you can see that the blades, you have one larger one, which is like this one here, and one uh, different blade that isn't actually a cutting plate. This is like a blade from Secret here, as I'm coming to in a minute. And that means these are like a combination of uh, clippers and Secret here, which makes them a little bit stronger. Last year, I clipped with those the Fuji cherry, which has small leaves and thinner and um, softer branches, and that worked pretty well. So I was happy with the result. Next, let me just close them up. I'm gonna go to these. These here are snips. And those snips, you can see they have shorter blades and the blades, they get uh, thinner towards the end, which makes them really great for any uh, precision kind of work. For example, I do uh, deadheading with those, like cutting uh, dead blossoms of rhododendron, for example, or also they can be used for uh, pine cutting. So when you prune the new buds, in springtime. So anything that requires a little bit more precision at the at the tip here, those are really great for this kind of purpose. Next, the secateurs is the all-rounder tool. I use those quite a lot, probably most of all the gardening tools. And these are great for any type of pruning work on shrubs or smaller trees. I use them specifically for Japanese maples. And if I open them up, you can see they have one a larger blade that's the cutting blade and then this blade here this is the thinner one which is just supporting the cut um, these ones can be used to a branch thickness of up to 15 millimeters it depends a little bit on the wood 15 millimeters that's five eighths of an inch and um, if the wood is not too hard it's uh, it's fine to cut uh, branch thicknesses like that with those secateurs, they're very strong. Um, if the wood is too hard, it's maybe not advisable to cut with those, but they are a fantastic tool for any type of pruning work. The next one are the garden scissors. They look like this, so they're similar to the snips in terms of using them. So also those I use for deadheading uh, blossoms, for example, or also for uh, pine butt uh, cutting in spring. And you see also here the blades are shorter and get thinner towards the end. So it's great for anything that requires uh, precision at the end. And last but not least, the saw that I'm using, so the pruning saw. Uh, this one I use also for maple pruning, for example, or any other branch cutting for branches that are up to 50 millimeters thick. That's about two inches. Um, if the branches get any thicker, it's advisable to use uh, proper, you know, large branch cutters and not really any of these tools. But for anything that is up to 50 millimeters and if the wood isn't too hard, they are really working great. So uh, on a general level, all these tools, they are from Japan and they're made in Japan. Uh, they're high quality gardening tools and they're all made out of steel. 
Those four here specifically are made out of carbon steel. This one here is made out of a Japanese steel and those two are also made out of steel. So it makes them really uh, fantastic tools. The way they are made, uh, specifically talking about these here, they are either hand forged or drop forged. Drop forged means they are made with a mold and that means the steel is one piece. So there is no uh, weak link to this. Uh, so these tools are really very strong and high quality tools. They are also very, very sharp. So always be careful when using them. So for me, just uh, from my personal experience, I would never go back uh, cutting with the standard gardening tools. Um, I would always be using those. And if you take care of them and handle them with care, uh, they hold for many, many, many years. Now, next, I would like to show you how to clean the tools. Uh, maybe you saw that they are quite uh, dirty. This is from working with them from the last season. And I'm going to show you how to clean them and also how to sharpen them. I will demonstrate on one of the tools how to do that. I'm going to show you the cleaning process on the secateurs and let's move first the other tools to the side a little bit. Okay, and then what you need for cleaning is first of all this one here. This is a scouring pad. This is made specifically for these types of tools. This is some uh, harder rubber material. And with this one, basically all the, the dirt on the tool, you can see here, uh, you see the black, darker areas. This is all like resin and just dirt that comes uh, or stays on the blade from uh, cutting. Uh, throughout the season so that's normal so that's thing number one and then second is camellia seed oil this is something that is used typically in japan to clean tools and to maintain and lubricate the tools and the blades and this oil is filled into this dispenser this has this little uh, pad here on the top so it makes it easier to apply to the tool okay so first i'm going to apply some of this camellia seed oil onto the blade you can see comes out easily here and then I'm just using this pad and I just go along the steel blade here and you see this removes it easily this um, instead of oil you can also use water but I personally do not like using water on the blades because they may uh, rust from water so I always keep them far away from it so some patches like this one here, they may need a little bit more uh, scrubbing here. But it's all coming off. I just put some oil on. So and this is something I typically do once a year. If the tools really have a lot of resin, for example, on, so if you're cutting any conifers, then uh, I do it also during the year, but normally I do it either at the end of the season or the beginning of the new season, which we have now. And then turning them around and then putting some oil on and the same on the other side. So you see this doesn't really take that much time. It's relatively fast. So they look pretty good now. Um, here I'm just using a microfiber cloth to wipe off the excess oil here for now and to see if there are any uh, stains left. Okay. So you can see there are some areas you see like here where it's still a little dark. So I'm just going to go over this again. The oil that remains on the blade that's enough for repeating this and same on this side here just going over it again to remove the rest of it okay so this is the last bit of it that looks very good so that's the result after cleaning it with the scouring pad next before i apply the final layer of camellia seed oil i will uh, sharpen this tool 
Okay, so next I'm gonna sharpen the tool and for this I have here a sharpening stone. That's just a bowl with water because the stone should be soaked in water a little bit beforehand so it's not dry. And this has a fine grit. This is like a thousand grit, so it's the finest one, which is a, a great um, all-rounder uh, type of stone to sharpen the tools. So I'm gonna get started with the, uh, this, um, the inner side of this blade. And obviously on these second years, it's only this blade that needs sharpening, not this one here. And how it works is that this stone is held at a light angle and you have to go from the inside towards the outside. So basically work your way around or along the blade and doing this um, between 10 and 20 times, depending on how blunt the tool is, that's enough. So that is the inside done. Now I'm turning it around and I just do a few uh, strokes here on the outside. It's basically the same way, holding the stone at an angle and just working along. And so that will do for the outside. Okay, and on these stones you see they have uh, a side that has like, it's rounded, which makes it a lot easier to, to work with. Obviously, they're also just flat ones, so it doesn't really matter whatever works best for you. All right, I'm now gonna uh, continue with the other tools, but before I do, I almost forgot, is to put the final layer of camellia seed oil on. And so first making sure that everything is really dry because a little bit of water is coming from the stone uh, onto the tool, and that's okay. And then I just apply camellia seed oil with the dispenser bottle like this. So along the blade and also around this uh, bolt here so it keeps it nice and lubricated and the oil I'm putting now this one is just staying on so I'm not wiping this off again and it will keep the tool uh, nice and smooth and that's the process I do for maintaining the tools I'm gonna close this and this goes away in the holster again Right, I'm now going to work my way through all the other tools I have. I have quite some to go, but they're all need cleaning before we start the season. And that's all for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!